Councillors, welcome and uh, members of the public gallery, welcome to our uh, August meeting, our opening meeting with our open prayer. We get thanks for the contribution by our pioneers, early settlers, and those who brought the various wars from the country to tend to the community we have today. By the words of our mouths and meditation of our hearts, we accept them by sword. They try to sign out a little apology. Amen. Tell us about a country I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land that we're meeting on today. I always like to pay respect for the elders both past and present, for the capital, Camilla Roy and Baseline Nation, to extend their respect to other Aboriginal people present. Councillors, we have no apologies. We we'll move on disclosures and declarations of interest. Our disclosures, we've got disclosures to do with um, item EMB 1217 with the early people based amendment from Councillor Robert Pleasant, and I thank you, Councillor. Um, confirmation of the previous minutes, councillors, previous minutes of our last meeting, and also our extraordinary meeting held on the 17th. So we'll pass both days. So, someone who was in attendance at, uh, at that meeting would like to move that they are true. Congrats, Reverend, please. Councillor Tom Peters, thank you. Second, please. Mike Petrie, thank you. Councillor Mike Petrie, all in favour? Against? Carried. Thank you, councillors. Table your documents, councillors. I know it didn't relate to the items. It's just something that we have related to Edmund item. We have two to deal with in confidential. What I'd like to do, councillors, is um, move one of those items uh, to deal with um, straight away, more or less, after we do our, uh, we have a public, uh, public access to our new sergeant. So what I'd like is a motion to move um, to move item ENV 17 slash 17 um, to deal with straight away after our public access session so we can deal with that because Andre needs to to go and have a, uh, a phone call by 11 o'clock so we'll, we'll deal with that and we'll move that one item forward put the other item back into our confidential which is item ec 023 slash 17 so as councillors understand we're happy with that okay can i move in a second to do that please councillor on board thank you second by councillor beck sawyer thank you all in favor against okay. thank you councillors I'm sorry, Councillor Patrick. 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 I'm sorry, Session councillors, we do have our new sergeant in, in town, James. I'll ask James to come and, and just introduce himself. So us as a councillor, we're pleased to stand and welcome a guest to our chamber. James, James Thank you, you councillors. James, welcome, and, and I did invite you up. It is, it is fairly standard that when we uh, have uh, um, someone as acting or or as a new sergeant, he's a new position, and you are permanent position. Um, and I welcome you as mayor and uh, introduce you to our council. So, so please um, feel comfortable and and, um, and welcome to Danfield. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, as I said, my name is James Bowden. I'm the new sergeant here at Tenerfield. I noticed it says senior constable, but ah. Uh, <laughs> and change that straight away. And the name is spelled B O A D, and so. Um, this is not my first time of being a sergeant. I was a sergeant in my last area, um, so I just so uh, you understand that, um, that I'm not um, so new to this. Um, by way of apologies, um, I didn't sleep last night. The the joys of, of my um, profession. Um, I sat at uh, Jennings all night with an unexploded grenade. So um, I've just um, been to the range and, and exploded that with um, some military personnel this morning. So in case I'm a little bit uh, disjointed in my thought process, you'll know that it's because I haven't slept since. Uh, um, two nights ago. So. Um, yeah, so just a little bit about myself. Um, I come from a large family. I'm one of nine kids. Um, I'm the oldest son. My parents have a or well, had a small crop farm up in on the Sunshine Coast of Queensland and grew strawberries and beans. Um, I didn't want to grow strawberries and beans because I didn't like the um, small crops. So I went out and um, leased a dairy farm. So I had a dairy farm for um, for 11 and a half years until the government um, did what they do best and um, deregulated the dairy industry and um, ruined it. 
Um, so as a result of that, obviously, I thought if I can't beat the government, I need to go and work for the government. Um, so hence why I decided to join the police. And I, uh, New South Wales was the, was the choice because, um, uh, to cut a long story short, I uh, could come up with a lot of variety of reasons, but uh, at the time, Bob Carr was um, uh, recruiting every Tom, Dick and Harry, and I thought that sounded like me. So um, I threw my hat in the ring and ended um, and, and up joining New South Wales Police. So, um, uh, I've also been married for 25 years um, to my dear wife Nicole, and we have six children, and they range in age from 7 through to 24. Um, so when my first station was Cabramatta, um, so when I arrived at Cabramatta come from a, a country place in Queensland, um, it was, uh, if you've been to Cabramatta, um, if you can imagine a, uh, a country boy through and through that knew how to um, grow crops and milk cows, um, arriving in Cabramatta my first day was um, the biggest eye-opener I think I've had in my entire life. Um, so I did some time in Cabramatta and then I went to Campbelltown, um, worked out there, out of there for a while. Um, and then after that I decided I wanted to get out of the city. I didn't particularly like it very much. Um, and so we transferred out to a one-man station out near Moree, a little town called Ballatta. And I was there for five and a half years. Um, so, um, you know, had some great uh, friendships there that we still maintain to this day that um, we stay with them and they come and stay with us. So, um, it's quite an enjoyable time. After that, I went to Yurala, which is obviously just south of Armadale, um, with a lock-up keeper there. And I was only there for a short period of time, for two years, until I won a sergeant position at my last area, which is Lake Cadillago. And if you're not sure if you might not, not know where Lake Cadillago is, it's a small indigenous community, um, uh, about uh, 100 and 130 k's northwest of Griffith. Um, so I was um, I worked there for three years. Um, in my time there, I developed relationships of trust and confidence with the indigenous community, um, and I was invited to their to their meetings um, and to their lands council uh, meetings on a regular basis as well. Um, so uh, my policing philosophy is is quite simple, and that is that um, community based policing. I like to talk, as my staff can already attest. Um, when I was a bit more junior in my career, an old sergeant, I came into work one night and he turned to my partner and said, oh, sorry, I've got to put you with Bowden. There's, ear, there's earplugs in my desk. Um, <laughs> you'll need them by the end of the shift. <laughs> so um, I'm quite good on the talk, and, but I encourage anybody to come and speak to me. Um, my door is always open. Um, I like walking around down the main street because that encourages people to come up and speak to us. Um, that's how we get information, that's how we build um, community confidence, and that's how the community has confidence in what we're doing, uh, because you know what we do um, is we're primarily here to serve and to protect our communities. Um, too many times I think when people hear the sirens going and a police car flashes past, um, if I was to ask each of you here if you saw a, a police car going past you with sirens, what would be your first impression as to what that police truck was doing? And I would probably submit that most of you would think the first thing that would go into your mind is, gee whiz, somebody's in trouble. You know, rather than maybe I would flick it back to maybe help is on the way, because that's what we're there for. We're there to, to help people, and that's our primary thing is to make people's lives better. Um, and sometimes, of course, that goes to the enforcement part, where it's because, for example, the High Patrol caught someone, a red P plate the other day doing 163 down at, um, at Dundee. So red P plates, 163 kilometres an hour, and you can make your own mind up of the danger that that, that would involve. Um, so that's where the enforcement for us comes in as well. Um, but so if you've got any questions, by all means, um, please ask. Um, any concerns, by all means, said my door's always open. Um, said I firmly believe in, in, in building that relationship with the community. I've bought a house in town. Um, I'm not living in a police house, I've bought my own house up on Duncan Street. So I'm not here for six months, I'm not here for um, two years or three years until the next posting. I'm here because this is where I want to be. Um, doing three years at Lake Cadillago uh, is considered in the New South Wales Police as a special remote location, which means I could go anywhere in the whole state. Right? And I picked Tannerfield. So I was offered other places, but I picked Tannerfield. Okay? So I want you guys to know that I'm not here going to rack off in six months' time, that I'm, in, that, that I'm in committed to the town and I'm committed to, to making a positive difference. Um, but as I said, from what I've seen so far, the community is a lovely place. I know in my newspaper article, one of the things that it still, it still shocks, shocks me the amount of gates and, and the amount of fences that we don't have in town. 
Having said that, I've just uh, got a call from my missus that uh, we brought four chooks all the way up. We brought four chooks, eight budgies, and the kids and a dog in the car up from Lake Adiligo, and the fox visited last night. So I'm now, I've got, now I've got one chook left. I'm here to town, and so if I could find that fox, there would have been some shots fired last night. So, um, yeah, so like I said, but please um, don't make yourself a stranger to me. I won't make myself a stranger to you. I'm, I'm always out and about, um, always happy. My phone's always on. As I, say, as I say to my guys, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I've been married for 25 years, so I'm, I'm stuck at home. <laughs> uh, so I'm more than happy to take any calls for anything that, that, that concerns you, okay? James, thank you. And, and, and once again, Reverend Sullivan, I'll say this on behalf of the whole council, welcome. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, um, thank you very much. It was a wonderful presentation and first introduction to our council. Our relationship with our police force as a council uh, is healthy and strong, yep. and to share with the council, as you know, that we are um, up, to, uh, up to speed with our numbers. Uh, we're very lucky yep. uh, in, our, uh, in our local area, so that's a, that's a good thing. And, um, I look forward to our, our travel to their meetings with our local area to the meetings we have, and uh, we'll contact you uh, to, uh, if you, you mentioned to, I think it's important with our regional advisory committee meetings too, that you're fully aware that we're there not to some men, there's been a good support for that, and uh, Miranda, I'm sorry. And uh, so we want to continue that. So, but welcome and thank you very much for, for making the time today. We know you're a busy person. Thank you very much. Thank you, James. <laughs> did anyone have any questions before? No, oh, yeah, right. you did. So. Oh, right, well, well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Welcome, James. And uh, it's, it's good to have some stability, I think, following in the police here. There's been so many sergeants coming. Quite often, we didn't know who they were. That's a like, yeah. steps in the night sort of thing. But the biggest issue in the police thing, and I'm sure we're all aware of all of these complaints, is access to the police station. You go down yeah. there and you press a button on the wall, you might get through to Armadale, you might. Yeah. And is there any way that you can use your... Um, to, to cut a long story short, I could yeah. blow smoke up your nose. Yeah. The answer is no. Um, uh, I'm not, um, I'm a real blunt bloke. What yeah. you see is what you get. I'm yeah. just a farmer's, farmer's kid that joined the police. Yeah. Um, I'd like it to be different. I'd like it to be in the old days where you had my mobile number and you could call me any day of the hour or night. But the award says that that's not the way it's allowed to be anymore. Um, so if the, we are always available. We may not be on or we may not be there at the station, but we are always available. Yeah. So if there's an emergency, if it's anything like that, we are always available. So I would encourage you to press the button and to wait. Yeah. And then when the call comes, if it's an emergency, tell them that. But I would encourage you, if it's an emergency, to ring AAA for a start. Because then you go, you bypass the police internal mechanisms where it goes to Armadale, and the Armadale sergeant then will say, oh, do we call Tannerfield out, do we not? Whereas if you call AAA, it's a little bit different. Is there any, any way that you can use your knowledge and authority to get a clerical officer reinstated there? For many, many years, a girl called Jenny Carroll yeah. had worked in. Well, she was virtually de facto police. Yeah. In a similar uniform. But is she a VIP? Is she or? Uh, sorry? Was she, uh, no, 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 no. She was just she was a full time clerical officer at yeah. the police station. And that position was being served in Armadale back 15 years ago. Yeah. But even though we didn't have a. I'll make inquiries, but said I was, I, was, yeah. I was unaware of that. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in regards to that, as I said, I just encourage you to do that. But if you. When you get through, if they say there's no police around or, or they're tied up, if you need to speak to somebody urgently, say there's a, the AAA, and if not, then say, can I give a message to the sergeant to call me when he's back on shift, and I will call you. Okay. Yeah, I'm just um, saying what people ask. You know. Yeah, I know. It's a, it's a, it's said I've now done 11 years out in the Western Region, and it's a constant bugbear of communities. Is it the same sort of, the same yeah. sort of range out there? Yeah, yeah. Lake Adelaide is the same. We don't run a 24-hour station like today. There's two police on. As I said, I'm on night shift, so I'm not even meant to be here. But there's two police on, and one of them is from Glenn today. Okay. Um, we've obviously got the way that the mechanisms work. There's um, eight police in town, a sergeant and seven constables. At the moment, um, I'll, I'll let you know the, 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 the makeup. One's off on sick leave, um, one's on maternity leave, um, and then you've got, so we're straight away, we're down to six. Now, it's very hard to maintain a roster, two on days, two on nights, with six staff. So at the moment, we've got. <coughs> Some coming up from Glenninus, but Glenninus has got true transferring out in the in the near future. So staffing levels with the police is always a fluid thing. Highway Patrol don't staff the front office, um, and so it's left to us to do that. But I'd encourage you if we're not there and you want to speak to me, then just say, please, can you get a message to the sergeant? 
and I'll and I will call you back. So um, it may not be straight away because they may not give me the message straight away, but I'll definitely be emailing the message. So. So, right, James, thank you. Yeah. Well, I can just hop in there and uh, thank you, James, and thank you, Councillor, for your question. Councillor, if this is the closest 24 hour policing does this casino, and I can share with you it's because of their crime rate. Our crime rate is, is, is very, very good, and, uh, and, and that's why the, the um, as James has, has explained, that's why the, the um, system is, is how it is. So it's, it's what we deal with all the time now. Um, but it's not what it used to be, but it's all to do with resources and finances. Now, it's all to, to do with WHS. WHS means now that police are not allowed to work after dark by themselves. Mm -hmm. um, that's federal legislation, that's not state based, which is why a lot of one man police stations, now the likes of Deep War and Emmerville, are basically not functioning as Deep War and Emmerville because they're not allowed to WHS wise. Because once it hits dark, you've got to be with a partner, mm -hmm. because, and that's WHS legislation, that's what's going all around the state. It's going. Um, it's basically killed one-man police stations in Western Australia at the moment because they're they've taken it to the next level. Um, so maybe New South Wales will go down them uh, down that track. But um, for our eight police, believe it or not, we have a mechanism called um, the computer aided dispatch system, or we call it the CAD system. Now that system logs all jobs that are called in. So and that's why I encourage people if you've got something that you wanted to tell, please ring and log it as a job because then it'll go on the system as a job. Because if it's not on the system as a job, when Sydney look at our staffing allocation numbers, they will go and they'll look at raw numbers. They don't look at anything else. They look at raw numbers based on that computer aided dispatch system. And they've told us, as of, as of about six weeks ago, that we've already got too many staff here. So that's their views based on our on our um, computer aided dispatch job numbers. So that's their raw statistics. So that's why I encourage the community. How many times do we see rural farmers when we go out there and they'll say, yeah, we had a stealing, but did you report it to us? No. Or you'll say to a person, you know, you'll go there and they'll say, oh, yeah, we had a trespass last week or someone broke into my car, I didn't have it locked, but they stole some stuff out there. Did you report it? No. Mm -hmm. Well, as a result of that, we don't get that as a, as a crime statistic to back up the fact that we actually do require a better coverage than what we currently got. Yeah. Do a catch-22 there because they know that we'll go to police tax, I'm not going to have to talk to Armadale. But why bother? Um, no, because we will get back to you. Yeah, yeah I know. That's, that's a perception. Obviously. Yeah, that's a perception. So, but yeah. it's perhaps something that we need to have a look at that perception because yeah. we will get back to you. Yeah. As I said, everyone that messages me, I said I had, I come into work, I'd been back at Lake Agilego for a court matter, and I come back to work with three emails and a job that can the sergeant contact me each of them. Yeah. And they've all been contacted and they've all been spoken to. So. Councillors, James, thank you. We do need to keep moving, Councillor. We've got a, a pretty full day, but James, thank you. No worries. Again. Thank you. And, and, and once again, well, no worries. Thank, thank you very much. Well. <laughs> Councillors, we'll, we'll move back into our uh, more of the meeting. I do apologise. We've got a bit of a procedure matter to tidy up here. To do with the disclosure and declaration of interest, Councillor Peter is here, one, one in. Can I move in a second one, please, to accept that? Uh, Councillor Peters, thank you. Second by Councillor Berry. All in favour? Yes, carried. Thank you, councillors. Councillors, I did, and thank you for uh, accepting that. We need to deal with a uh, with a um, confidential matter. So, can someone please move to a gallery confidential? Councillor Roman, briefly, thank you. Second by Councillor Sawyer. All in favour? Against, yes, carried. I'm sorry, but the gallery will be a little bit more open doors again. And, uh, and engaging with the public gallery, it's always important. And, well, I, I do do that, unofficially I do, um, in the public gallery is uh, a newly elected council. You're all welcome, and, um, and I wish you well in the future. Obviously, councillors, it's not declared till 11 o'clock, so that's that's the official comment. So, uh, Bob, who will be councillor of Raven, will start as an official councillor at a September meeting. So that's that's how that rolls, and um, we sorted all that down yesterday to make sure that uh, everything was right there. So that's officially how it goes. So until it's, until it's officially declared, that's that's what we're dealing with. Once he's officially declared, isn't he a councillor? Yeah, of course he is, but as far as attending the meeting today. Yeah, I mean, that's all that's right. Right. Could he attend it uh, once he's declared a councillor? No, the advice we're giving him starts in September. Okay. Okay. So we'll start with the councillors and we'll put our hard copy on page 37. It is item ENV 12 slash 17. It's uh, to do with the Tenerfield uh, Local Environmental Plan 213 proposed amendments, plan proposal, RG3 zone land provisions. So can I have a, can I have a, 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 a just hang on, Councillor Brothers. Can I have a move and a seconder? 
to deal with this item, please. Uh, Councillor Michael Petrie, thank you, second by Councillor Murray. Councillor Ron Petrie has declared an interest, a declaration of interest, and, and I thank you, Councillor, he will leave the meeting. Thank you. Councillor, the other thing I do need to know, and I hope you've all got it, uh, there was which I accepted as, as chair uh, with tabling the documents. It's been tabled uh, by Councillor Michael Petrie, uh, and uh, I've no problems with that being tabled. It does deal with this. So has everybody got a copy of that of that late document? Thank you, councillors. Okay. Well, we'll hand over for that today. Thank you always. There's, there's making time and, and being here. Thank you for the work you've done for this. So um, I hand over to to our uh, senior town planner today to present this, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the report before councillors really to uh, accept and a direction in moving forward the planning proposal, which was. Um, adopted and, and resolved to move forward by Council at the meeting of the 27th of June. Uh, the recommendation adopts option one in the report. Uh, I apologise if that was not clear in the, in the recommendation, which all it does that is different to Council's former resolution is incorporates comments that were made by Forestry Corporation New South Wales and includes that in the planning proposal document, which is found uh, in attachment booklet one, attachment three, and that was at the request of the Department of Planning and Environment. So it really is just to incorporate those comments and then proceed as we were based on the June 2017, uh, 27th of June 2017 resolution. Thank you, Jemaine. Councillors, the report's there in front of you and it is the top. Um, questions to Jemaine to do with the report? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Sawyer, thank you. Uh, Having had a quick look through you, Mr. Mayor, having had a quick look on the document like Council Petrie has tabled, yeah. uh, Tamara, have you had a chance to have a look at that document? Can you just give us a brief summary of how that tabled document and your recommendation coincide or cross over or actually have some commonality at all? Thank you, Councillor Tamara. Through you, Mr. Mayor, the first paragraph of the, the letter uh, tabled by Sunderson. Is in accordance with the recommendation. So, option one, um, as referenced there, the New South Wales Farms preference to approve option one, which is to remove IE3 and make all and currently zoned same as IE1 as their preference. That is what the recommendation is, so it's in line with that. In terms of other issues in relation to state forest leases, dedications, that really is an issue between uh, leaseholders and forestry corporations. So, we have our first to take a decision on clients. Thank you, Tamar. Well, thank you, Councillor, for bringing that forward. Councillors, any more questions to today to do with the report? No more questions, Councillors. The Officer's recommendation is there. All in favour of the recommendation? Against? Okay. Can someone go and get Councillor Robert Petrie, please? Robert Petrie? Councillor Petrie, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Petrie. Thank you, Okay, councillors, we move on to page 42 in your hard copy. It's item NB 13 slash 17, development application, 2170069 recreation facility to do the archery range. Go and move to the second, please, to deal with this report. Councillor Berry, I thank you. Seconded by Councillor Murray, and I thank you. And once again, I'll hand over to Tway to present this report. Thank you, Tway. Through Mr. Mayor, the report today is presented to Council with the recommendation for approval to determine the development application for the proposed archery range. Uh, Council may recall that uh, there was a resolution to agree to lease the land um, subject to the development application process proceeding. During that process, we did receive three submissions uh, raising some concerns in relation to the proposal. Uh, they've been addressed in the report and recommendations uh, in the conditions have finally addressed uh, those concerns. Uh, so the recommendation is put to council for approval, subject to those conditions. Question to Tomato to do with this report, councillors. No questions. All happy to approve. Against Carol. So councillors, it is a it is a um, to do with a uh, development application, so we need to record all the all the uh, base evidence you need. So I'm just making councillors aware of that. So thank you, you Sarah, for reminding me. Great job. Okay, councillors, we move to page 48 in your hard copy. It's ENB 14 slash 17. It's a, it, it, to do with the uh, finance. It's the Mount Lindsay Road Waste Collection Service Fee. 
Got a move to second, please, to deal with this item. Councillor Bromwood Petrie, I thank you. Second, please. Councillor Sawyer, I thank you. And um, I'll hand over to our uh, acting manager of finance, Andrew. Andrew, thank you for coming to our meeting as always and being involved with our council. So I'll hand over to you for the second. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, council will recall at the Jew meeting uh, with, with, uh, the Mount Lindsay Grove waste collection was discussed. Um, a number of recommendations were made, including the adoption of a fee for that service. And at that meeting, it was decided that um, a charge of $219 be charged for that service. And it went out to the community. And um, after 30 days, there has been no submissions in relation to the fee. So today, we are recommending that the fee be applied. Thank you, Andrew. Councillor, any questions to do the, with the officer's recommendation to Andrew? Okay, the officer's recommendation there to adopt the fee. All in favour? Against? Okay, thank you, councillors. Councillors, we're moving to page 50. It's item GOV 55 slash 17, finance and accounts. Can I move the second of please to do this review? Yeah. Councillor Michael Petrie, I thank you. Seconded by Councillor Tom Peters, and I thank you. And once again, I'll hand over to Andrew um, to Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, councillors, once again. Uh, this is a report that's required to be presented to council every month. Um, and it indicates we have roughly $12 million in the bank across the various funds. Um, we just ask that uh, council adopt the uh, report as of the 31st of July. Questions for Andrew to do with the, with the report, councillors? No, no questions. The officer's recommendations here to receive a vote. All in favour? Against? Carried. Thank you. Councillors, once again, in your hard copies, page 52, item GOB 56 slash 17. It's posted expensive report. Can I have a move and a second to deal with this item, please? Councillor Murray, thank you. Second, please. Councillor Mike Brinkley, thank you. And once again, I hand over to uh, Andrew to present the report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the report you have before you is in relation to capital expenditure for the coming year. Um, you will note that there were a number of other expenditures. Um, and they are listed in the table as part of the report. The reason for those over expenditures, they are all the number of projects that were not completed in the end of last financial year and have been carried forward. But at this point in time, the, um, the reallocation of the budget, the unspent budget from last year, hasn't been made, um, and that will allocation will occur at the September review. So uh, this is that's the, the reason, but we're at this stage we believe that the, um, those particular projects are tracking to their original budgets. Thank you, Andrew. Councillor's question to Andrew to do with the report. Councillor McNeish. Just quickly, Mr. Mayor, what, what's the amount of expense you're talking about there, Andrew? May I ask the same question? The amount of expense, I believe, is in relation to the side yards. There's a fence around, around there, I understand, and that's what that's the place to. They renewed that, that fencing in those cooler squares, Councillor? No, I saw that, yeah. Um, and it's cheap, isn't it? It can be cheap. We're trying to do some work for you. But not at that price. <laughs> 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 anyway, that's, a, that's a personal opinion, Councillor. Any more questions, Andrew, to do with the report? Agreed for two officers. Agreed for two officers. They're all in favour of receiving note, Councillors. Against, Gary, thank you. Councillors will move on to page 55 in hard copy. It's item GOB 57 slash 17. It's the uh, budget rebates for the 217 218. Could I have a move for the second, please, to deal with this one? Councillor Greg Sawyer, thank you. Seconded by Councillor White Petrie, thank you. And once again, I'll hand over to Andrew to present the report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Every year, every year, the, um, there is a number of projects that may not have been commenced at the end of the last financial year for all variety of reasons. And um, the, the items that are addressed at this table today that were asked the council to uh, re vote uh, are, those, are those projects that weren't commenced during the uh, last financial year. So the intention is that as the spending wasn't spent last year that we pulled into the new budget so we're asking council to re affirm the, the voting of these budgets for the new financial year. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Councillor Berry, you have a question to do with the report? Yes, I have. It's the new couple of toilets in Captain Cook Park, 
I thought they were finished well and truly last year. I'm just wondering why the ten thousand dollars this year. That's for the paper. The answer is, um, Councillor, I don't know. I have to take that on notice as I um, currently don't have information related to the project. But I can certainly find out and have a report and send back to Councillor. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you for your uh, question, Councillor. Councillor, any more questions? Councillor Roman, Petrie, yes. Thank you. Um, sorry, Andrew, you may not know this. I, I was just wondering what the hundred twelve thousand dollars for the manhole level alterations are they around the streets? Are they also um, the admin building here replacing the air conditioning system and the window frames? Are they faulty or not? Okay. Again. Um, I've had the privilege of reporting to these things rather than knowing the project intimately. Um, the, my understanding is that um, the part of the S, the, um, the rate of variation, um, was about building improvements to this building, um, and they, they have listed items um, that were, were deferred in terms of the works being undertaken, and um, I understand now that those will take place this year, but obviously we need the budgets for those. I was wondering why it was required. Why was it required? No, why did we need to change the air conditioning? If I can share with you, Councillor, there has been some some uh, problems with the air conditioning queue for some time. I don't know about the, 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 uh, the standard, the world, I'm uh, sorry, not standard, but the, the scope of the work, but it, it has been ongoing for some time. And the other thing about the manhole alterations, is that around the street? I'm sorry. Councillor Brown, I, I don't, I, I'm sorry. But I'm sure that the, our, uh, the staff will come back to us with the intro on that. Yeah, thank you. Councillor Tom, please, and I'll go to you, Councillor McNish. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was wondering why I'm going to spend another 50 grand on a loading ramp and put it with the patent facilities. Seems to have a lot of money, you know, build a yard for that. I've got a lot of effects on a yard for 50 grand. Councillor, where are you referring? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Councillor in relation to that, my understanding is that um, that was an original budget item that was included in last year. Oh, they all are. But it had been included in last year's original budget. But my understanding is that the intention is that they, that money will be rolled into the truck wash facility and put part of that greater project. But we obviously still need the project to be able to undertake that, those works. And, and Councillor, if I can, and we respect Andrew to, to help you there, um, with the improvements that have, are ongoing there, uh, there's been a, a lot of work which has been good to improve the safety around the loading ramps, uh, Councillor, uh, as access from the trucks to into the loading ramps and, and back out with the little gates, and, and, and they've been doing a really good job. So I, I'm in, guessing that, that that's in that too. Um, and to say our committee meetings, I'm happy to take that forward and, and uh, be clear on that. So, um, so we'll do that. Okay. Councillor McNish. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just a bit of clarity there. About, I think about 10 years ago, um, we've identified that quite a few of the manholes around the place have been kind of like Fitzman over or they were below the road level and some were sort of totally Fitzman right over, so no one knew where they were. And I think from memory, that was one of the uh, late council, John Martin's first jobs as an engineer here was to identify where they all were and get them raised so they could be used for their appropriate purpose. So that's what explains what, what that was. It's always good to have, to have a councillor from previous experience. Thank you, Councillor. Okay. Councillor, are there more questions to uh, Andrew to do with the report? The report said, Councillor, and it is uh, to authorise the expenditure of funds. All in favour? Against? Carried. Thank you. Councillors, we move on to page 59. It's item GOB 58 slash 17. To do with that community contribution donation, 217 18 for the entry year. Can I have a move and a second to deal with this report? Councillor McNish, thank you. And seconded by Councillor Petrie, and I thank you, uh, Michael Petrie, and I thank you. And I'll hand over to uh, Andre to uh, present the report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillors, as you would be aware, each year Council provides a certain level of funding to uh, its various community organisations that obviously have a need uh, and Council has been through a process, I should say, a committee and council has been through a process of uh, making a review of applications received for, for various levels of funding. Uh, this report uh, summarises those recommendations and is committed to for adoption. 
questions or comments councillors to do with the, the report? There's no councillors. What I do want to just note, it's only for clarity of the council. That's a good thing to note, but with 41 uh, from Torrington with the All Saints Restoration Committee, that would, the committee felt that all the, the councillors were on that uh, to do with the application sort that didn't sit there. Tomorrow you're here, and I thank you for your support. That, that went over to the Heritage, and they were successful in, in, in gaining some funding to do that work there. So it's a good story, and I just want to share that with council. So that worked really well. And that's good. Our council worked like that with our committees and, and where it sits. So we had, that was a good win for the fellow community. Okay, any more questions, councillors? Oh, sorry, Councillor Murray, yes? Um, through you, Mr. Mayor. I'm just asking about the, the, the amount given to Tate College. Are there any people left? Attending Tenth College, yeah? We, Councillor. Oh, Tenth College, $150. Oh, Tenth Sixty. Presentation. Oh, sorry, Tenth. Presentation. Oh, fifth question, Councillor, but it, whether the money's used or not, too, but I mean, that's a, that was to do with support from the Council to do with a, a presentation. And I don't think it's been in there for some time. Yeah, I'm happy to follow that up, Councillor, to see to make sure they're still active. Obviously, I'll reserve it. I can't. I'm sorry, I can't answer that. Councillor McNish. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, Mr. Councillor Murray, that was brought up at the community meeting. Actual need for that money as well. So Mike and I and Peter were we already discussed that. But, but as we go through, we didn't. We didn't uh, yeah, the oh, Councillor, sure. if I can, if I can add. Um, as we go through, and that's in the, in, in, the, in the place where, you know, to say that these rules stand and things we do as a council, it's good that, um, and I'll commend you on your question, but it's good that we, we look and review this all the time to see if some of these things have been there for that long, whether they're still actually, you know, should be there or they're actually activated or they, they're, they're doing this work. You know, because as a council, this is a community thing we do. You know, we offer the community $35,000, a lot of money. And you know yourself with the things you're involved with, council like that. You know, two hundred dollars worth is a lot to a small organisation. So, um, with these standard ones, which come up to eleven thousand one hundred, uh, we're supporting our, our uh, community, all supporting our, our schools with their presentation nights, and you know, we could even even throw in there, and uh, you know, with Woodmont School. You know, I remember that was debated a bit, but they're on the picture of our shire, and it shows a bit of support. There's a lot of rate payers that actually, uh, you know, return to rate payers that live in Woodmont. So, I'm all over the place. I'm just trying to. Put a wide view on what you what you brought up, but but it is something that you know we uh, we will follow up and make sure that that's still being used. I just think would have thought that the tape would have been providing funding for this presentation. Yeah, but without getting a long debate, yes, the Forbes. Yeah, no, fair point, and we will follow it up to see what you see. Okay, Councillor Bromley, please. Thank you. Item number thirty nine: the Ausfish contribution towards the national. Fishing days because it's the tenth of Dan. Yeah. Um, I presume that's the date. Is that some, uh, something in October where they created a national bond fishing day? And I presume they were hitting getting the <coughs> to be able to use the dam on that day. That's what I just want to make sure it's not some. A couple of things, Councillor. So I don't know the date, and the other one, the other one, the other one would be operational. I presume it would be because that's the standard thing. Something we probably should remind a bit more that, that you know. That the DMC and they need to come in to use and just for the application and community groups can use. Yeah. Okay. Councillor Murray? Through you, Mr. Mayor. But my understanding, wasn't Rotary running that? Rotary have run a competition here. Oh, yeah, but this is not this. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, councillors, any more questions, comments? The recommendations there, councillors, all happy to receive a note. I mean, sorry, to adopt. Yes, Carrot, thank you. Okay, councillors, we move on to page 64 in your hard copy. It's item GAB 59 slash 17. It's operational plan 216 17, review of activities April 217 to June 217. Can I remove the second to do with this report, please? Mm -hmm. Councillor Michael Petrie, thank you. Seconded by Councillor Murray, and I thank you. And I will hand over to acting to uh, Pike. Report. Thanks, okay. So the purpose of this report is to follow, um, follow the council for progress of activities for a period of one 
April uh, 2016 to 30 June 2017, so that is the last round of our, our previous operational plan, and all of those progress actions are actually included in the attachment A to supply back the attachment. So I'm more than happy to take any questions and answer those if I can with the officer's recommendation that the council receive and post progress report for the 2016 standard operational plan for that period from one April to the 30th of June. Thank you, colleague. Councillors? Any uh, questions to Kylie to do with the report? No? All happy to receive a note? Yeah. Sorry, Councillor, did you have a question? Just a quick question by Kylie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Kylie, um, please and charges. Should they not be included in this report? Uh, in the, the progress, Councillor? Yeah. If they're not, you, you wouldn't. The purpose of this report is to uh, highlight to the Council the activities mm -hmm. that have been undertaken. Are you talking about any reviews or discussion? on fees and charges in each yeah, we, we, section or yeah we, we, it was well a couple of meetings ago about particularly say our fees yeah. the waste levy yeah. uh the, the grids yes. there's three or four items from memory that's correct that we're going to bring back to council and discuss so we, we had a workshop on those those fees and charges to, to get a bit of, bit of direction my understanding i'm happy to be corrected is that we needed to review maintenance <coughs> future removing that that was to come back as a report to council which our officers are still preparing so that's the, the removal but if there is and so if we discussed at that particular workshop the other fees and charges if there's a, an appetite for council to further review those than what we have then if somebody could, could let me know we can do that well, well, that's that's my understanding yeah, they were, they were resolved, that's all. and that's if they, that's the, the feedback because as i said i i thought they were Oh, I don't I don't know if it's going to be resolved. Does anyone have the other council have to call them? No, we have to get the maintenance. And that's okay, more yeah. than happy, but there wasn't a clear direction from the workshop on what the <coughs> where council wished to go other than in my my view was yeah. the, the maintenance fee, which is and that's in the pipeline to come back to the report to council for decision for that fee. So so when we go for the colleagues we no, no, no one knows most of anything like that. I, I once again, more than happy if we, the, it will be need to look at that and based on the on the service. So what I would do is I would talk to um, David Stewart, obviously in terms of the, the sale yards fee. Yeah. The sale yards fee, the waste, uh, waste levy that goes on our rates. Uh, what, Robert, is it nine hundred dollar fee for the grids? Yeah, the grids are coming. Grids and public gates. Still frozen. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. in the pipeline for a report, and they came as a result of the workshop. I think that was the main one. No problem. I'll talk to um, to the actual the, the service providers and more facilities and more about come back as individual reports. So when we talked about that, the fees and charges that are adopted are in relation to the service that councils are providing. So we don't tend to treat them separately than, than the existing issue, if that makes sense. So you need to look at, as we talked about, the income that you generate from that and what that impact will be on the bottom line because council's adopted a budget at this point in time that recognises a certain level of income and is allocated a certain level of expenditure. So any changes that council makes to that income forecast will actually increase the cost to, if, if you reduce it, will increase the cost to council. If you increase it, obviously it will decrease the cost to council. So that's you have to be mindful of the yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor, and thank you, Colin, for your reply. Councillors, any more questions to do with this report? Report said, Councillor, all happy to receive a note against. Okay, well, thank you, Councillors. Page 66, Councillors. It's item GOB 60 slash 17 to Corum and to re adopt local policies. Corum, move for a second, please, to deal with this one. Councillor Berry, I thank you. Second, please. Councillor uh, Bromman Petri, I thank you. And I'll hand over to uh, to uh, Kyle to present his report. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this report is to bring to, to Council's attention uh, Section 165 and the re-adoption of existing uh, policies that haven't been re-adopted today. Um, so based on that, uh, the, the, the general undertaking, I guess, from staff is to go forward with now and review each and every one of those policies but with the recommendation there that council actually adopts the existing policy structure and make sure that that's the The officer's recommendation is that council re-adopt 
those councils are of course not very often since the commencement of the new chair of the council and the taking of the chair of that was to go to the Questions to uh, colleagues, the other report councillors? No questions? Office of recommendations, said councillors, to readopt these uh, those council local policies. All in favour? Against? Carried. Thank you. Councillors, we move on to page 68 to start of the report from the committee and delegates. And it's item RC 13 slash 17, your hard copy, to report for the local traffic committee. Then the chair of that, I, I'm happy to move the, the Report can I have a seconder, please? Councillor Peters, thank you. Questions, councillors, to do a report? Councillor Berry, yes? More of a comment than a question. Yeah. The yellow line marking of the Mount Lindsay, not Mount Lindsay, Mount McKenzie Road, it was uh, Stephen, I think it's a pronunciation, or Robinski, uh, said we could have the yellow line marking given the snow area, and I thought that would be a good idea for tourism. But that report will have to come back to the uh, to the road and road and traffic next meeting. That's good. Uh, Stephen, you meant to say that, or the rest of the city? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Councillor Brian Petrie, you've indicated, I'm sorry, and I'll go to you, uh, Councillor Mike Petrie, and you, Councillor Brian Petrie. They're just um, in relation to signage, and uh, the larger sign for two living balls. Um, I just raise it again, because I think it's a very good idea to have the sign for Ball Rock on the highway, like a, a nice sign, um, to attract people here, so this apparently the cause of um, a lot of our tourism is the attraction to Ball Rock, and we've, we've lost the, the big picture sign um, at, at the entrances to help keep people here, so that's why I do keep raising it, but nothing's been happening. The other is the Temple Sabbath sign, apparently was taken down in order to do the main street stuff. So the tourism sign here that, um, down there on the highway, directing people to the Sabre building. And right. then apparently that sign ended up at the workshop where when inquiries were made to get it put back up, it's apparently been disposed of. And council removed the sign, so it shouldn't be up to the Sabre to be replaced. Right. So Councillor, investigate. Yeah, we'll look to try to do with the, uh, with the local traffic those items you brought there, and as chair, we're not happy to take forward and discuss it. Okay, but that will, if, if you mention that to me, Councillor, I apologise that I haven't taken any of those forward, but if you do want to write them down and give them to me, I'm happy to take them. Okay, and we'll discuss it. Um, Councillor uh, Mike Peter. Uh, you know, just quite on the traffic thing, how about the intersection of uh, oh, that one, do you? That sort of white things they've got on one on each side, that's all they were going to do. That's it. That cost about $80,000, Councillor. I think it was definitely a waste of money, but I don't even see it when you go on fire. Well, please don't tell our Minister Barrage that because we're very pleased to, to get that. that to, to get a foot in the door, Councillor, and I know you probably disappoint me, but that is it. And they're activated to make everybody aware by entering the highway. Okay. They're activated coming from the Brooksville Way and, and the, uh, the Albaldine Road. And there are the two signs that actually got the crossing to slow down. Yeah. When you're coming in, that's what lights them up. That activates that. So that's that traffic on the highway that slows them down. So that's that's that. And that's what it's all about. So, but it is a foot in the door, and we'll keep to trying to pursue to, to improve that uh, intersection any way we can because it's a horrible, a horrible intersection. Terrible turnout, Anyway, that's it. Council, I'll go to Council Murray. Uh, sorry, you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I refer back to Councillor Brandon Petrie's remark on the signage yep. relating to the Saturn. Yep. That was passed in during the Streetscape Committee yep. because I wanted to minimise the amount of signs. Conglomerate the signs and the I'm, I'm to support Councillor Murray with the that, that that's exactly right for well, leaning towards that's why I've got that to less signage, to less of the signage in the main street. It came from this pretty sad. Whether it's right or not, I don't know. Well, studies have shown that too many signs, people can't read or the lines. But the other, yeah, of course, there's not to mention that. Yeah. The other thing is, um, Dr. Mackenzie Road. I'd like to add to that, if I can, at this point in time, a demarcation line from Gonflat Road heading west onto Mount Mackenzie Road. Is that sense to you? 
Okay. Right. Once again, to help the, the councillors on that committee, if you want to bring that forward, councillor, and, and like to, as us being on it, yeah. write it down and, and we'll take it forward to that, to discuss it that meeting. Yeah. Yep, it's okay? Thank you. And councillor, with, with that, so I don't want you to write that. Gentlemen, we'll pursue that and find out whether it's disappeared, whether it's to go back up. Thank you, Mr. because it's one of the big proposals to Jennifer, so that's that. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Just a, a question about uh, the, the item number two on page 75, the New England Highway, Grout Street, and the Field Street in pursuit. Did Stepford also advise that the Centre for Road Safety is calling for nominations for the installation of mobile speed cameras? I would have thought a mobile speed camera or something that moves. <laughs> um, and how to install it. Uh, they, they're talking about putting in a, another speed camera outside the John Buck Motel or? I haven't. That hasn't been spoken about at this committee council. Yeah, it was. It's, it's, it's on page 75, um, item 2, Peter. The, the last sentence there. Mm -hmm. um, It, with the item two with the New England Highway yeah, Mass Speed Camera. Yeah. Speed. Step also advised that the Centre for Road Safety is calling for nominations for the installation of mobile speed cameras. Okay. Okay. Well, Council, what I'll do, Andre has got some comments because he attends those meetings often. Yes, Councillor, uh, if you read into those words, what you know, it's not the installation, mobile speed cameras, exactly that. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, whether it's one of those cars that you see on the side of the road that's got a camera mounted on the back, I suggest you that's what the situation is about. That's what we do. Councillors, okay. So we're dealing with the uh, with the report to do with the Rose and Traffic Committee meeting. Any more questions, no, no. councillors? The report's there in, in front of you. All happy to receive a note. Yeah. Nothing against. Carrying. Councillor, we just need to go back and have a tidy up because we've, we've got a on what page? We're at 48. There is an error. Okay. Mm -hmm. then, <coughs> okay. So we need this really a typo in the report as to do with the uh, uh, with the Mackenzie Road Waste Service collection fees. So we'll make a, a, a amendment there that the that the uh, officer's recommendation and reports that the council adopt the new user fee is not two hundred and nineteen, it's two hundred and ninety seven dollars. Oh. Okay. Okay. The resolution as of the the um, meeting date. When did we deal with this? Uh, it doesn't matter, Colin. It's all good. But the amendment was carried. Okay. So ninety nine seventeen. Uh, I'll read the read the one that refers to this councillors. Conference of Public Survey to 2017 Waste Pickup Trials and Manage Road Council confirms 2718 NU is preference for a new user phase operational optional sorry fee of 297 in a per rate fund. And that has been advertised yeah. that fee. So we just need to tidy it up, And thank you, Andre, for bringing that to, to our attention. Make sure our records are true and correct. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh, Okay. Sorry, Councillor Petrie. I have, yeah, I have quite. Is this to do with this? Yeah, just, uh, just a bit. Once the cost of the inventory is done, it's going to go to the same fee. Same fee, Councillor. Same fee, Councillor. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. But that's that's the end charge that's in the collection area as identified. So you along the mountains, you can get out of the gym. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
Because it's, it's different feed here in town to get your garbage than what is out there. Yeah. Yes. How much difference is it? I have to go and get I'll go out and get me raised on this way, Council. I'll tell you. Yeah. That's what the mine's going to be. Sorry. That's all good. Okay. Council, so we're up to speed now. We'll go back and make that correction once again. Thank you, Andre. Council, we move on to our, our uh, next part of our meeting to do with the uh, procedure with Gallon and those This is item NM9. Slash 17, it's a notice motion of upgrade to the Build Air Strip to do a report of what this water council said on happy to move that. Can I have a second? Second. Second. Yeah. 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 Bitch pay all the upgrade. I want to put this to bed so we can start throwing on the sand and start again. In the just as recent as this week, I've had um, conversations with some uh, uh, private people who are happy to uh, commit financially to see some work done out there, which is a good thing. So I just want to start the whole thing again. We did a costing on what we're looking at, and uh, we'll look at that. So that's basically what it was. I'm happy to take any questions. Just a uh, good bit to comment on any but the uh, the upgrade that the I think the RFPS is looking for is the fact that there's a couple of humps yep. in the air strip and yep. you can't see uh, well, what happens to the end if you want in and that's the major objection. Thank you for your comments, Council, on that started and, and with the costing we'll obviously I hope that the, yeah. that would be in what the engineering department would be looking at. That's yeah. The yeah. And um, uh, what was the and to share with you too, to do with the, um, there was a patient phone out there two weeks ago, mm -hmm. which, you know, I don't need to share with everybody, you didn't really need to crash it. Councillor Mary. Yes, Mary, I thought we looked at this a couple of times in the last five years, you know, and uh, what's different this time is the fact that people are prepared to put money in. Is that the only difference? No, I well, this councillor, this, this uh, as recent as this week, I've had, I've had two conversations. With, uh, with private people um, that are happy to commit to see something done. This was this was this document was out before then, so the answer's is no. Um, I basically want to start again, Councillor, because what concerns me is, and I say this with utmost respect, but the, with the little bit that's been going on and the assuming that they're beginning one thing, council are owned this thing, and, and yet council are the people they're talking to. So it's like me going to your place, council, and start to dig a hole in your front yard. It's not, it's not my place. That's your front yard. So they need to respect that. We have, we have done costings in, and in the not in this uh, current council, but previously we have spent ten thousand dollars there, and, and a former engineer uh, Dennis Gaston, and, and it was a widening of the strip and better markers from memory. Uh, uh, it was costed, and, and there is a record of that. But I just want to start again and move forward. And, and so we did a, a proper costing to know what we're up against and, uh, and to anything to make it a bit better, uh, I'm happy to, to, uh, to help do that. Councillor Robin Peter, I'll go to you, Councillor Councillor Peters first then. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> those humps, those humps are usually big blue and planet rock. But unfortunately, you need ground penetrating radar going along that strip before you start picking things up. Yeah. Unfortunately. Noted, Councillor, and I'm sure that that um, in their report to come back to us in this coming year that, that we will get the line of that. Yeah. Councillor Ron Peter, do you have a question? Uh, 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 um, Tuesdays, Peter. Um, I was just wondering how it works when we've got the chopper now. So if there's a patient, how do, do they decide whether they go with the chopper or with the RFDS? And where does that RFDS plane take them to? Is it Lisbon or Brisbane? Yeah, uh, well, I can answer just as recent as a fortnight ago. It, uh, the patient was taken out there by ambulance from the hospital, from our the local hospital, and the plane then took them to Newcastle. Because we are, and that's, that's only one example. Right. So that doesn't answer your question, but I may give you an example. Yeah. That's what happened. So they'll make the decision at the yeah. hospital as to which one. Yes. So the other thing was, given that um, I understand there's been a few different costings over the years, and right. given that council's already spent $10,000 yeah. doing the, pre the, the last costing, yeah. Can we simply update that previous costing or are we going to spend another $10,000 doing the same work 
work again. Um, and the commitment, financial commitment, is that towards the cost or the actual doing of the pieces of knowledge? Councillor to answer in a little hard on Kevin Andre, um, and I really respect your question. With the 10,000 I mentioned to the previous council, it wasn't possible. That was actually was work that was done. That was, and you know, I could go and find it. It was to do from memory with, with either lighting or markers, and they widened the, the actual uh, maintenance of the strip. So they did. We, we do spend in our budget, and there, in black and white, $20,000 a year in maintaining that strip. And it is a well maintained grass strip. I'll argue that every day. I'm not an expert, pilot, or nothing. But um, um, I hope that's answered you. All I want from the, and, and obviously with our engineering department, they've got plenty to do. This is another job we're, we're putting on them, but that's what I've said in the calendar year that we can come back so we've got some data forward with some sort of figure we're looking at, you know, that we know we can move forward and, and pursuing funding uh, to do whatever because there's nothing in our budget to do this work. Yeah. And, and, and Andre, I'll ask him to come in here. When we get offers of, um, of, um, of um, independent, People happy to, to put money into this. It's something, you know, funny way I look at things, it's not even to that $10,000 that was given to the library. It still needs to be done in an appropriate way. So I'm waiting and wondering if better explaining that to me. But that's way down the track. But the conversations I have are just totally verbal. The people that are, are keen are sincere and they would like something done. So, and, and having to commit with machinery and money. So that's it. I will go to Andre before I continue, Councillor, just for some comment. Yeah, Council, still... What I would say in regards to this is that, yes, this has been looked at in the past. Uh, to what extent those costings are relevant today, to what extent the work that's been identified is relevant to today, I, I would have to check on that. Um, it's enough to say that, look, we're not going to be engaging any private consultants to come in at that extra cost to Council to uh, identify what needs doing and to cost what needs doing. Uh, I've got several airports before. Um, I have current knowledge on what you know, the cost to do this sort of thing, so I'll certainly have a look at it. That'll be something that's accommodated within the council's existing resources. Thank you for those comments. Council, sorry, I'll go to you and I'll come back to you, Councillor Barry. Thanks, Mr. Mayor, and thanks, Andre, for that clarification. Um, my major concern is the same as the other councils over there, that this has been done a couple of times. We actually the Shire, the community of the Shire owns the airport and been left out of the discussions to date, even though there's been some councils invited to go. I worked at the RFS in Queensland for 15 years and I made an approach to the current general manager of aviation, or whatever his title, because they change it every so often, and he assured me that they could land on the existing strip, but only in fine weather and never at night. But he did point out to me that they would be down the lower end of the packing order for tasking because the choppers would be the first priority to coming in. And as the case where that patient was taken out to Newcastle, that would be because those aircraft are what's called a southeastern section based out of Dubbo and Sydney. And the one that's at the airport in Brisbane is mainly tasked with Queensland. And they would not come down here, even though they're the closest. But they have picked up patients at Inverell. They're involved in transplanting and things like that. So it's not impossible. But they, he stressed to me that the RFDS, with their existing aircraft, can land on that strip as it is, but daylight and fine weather. Thank and, you I would, and I wouldn't support us going further down the track unless we do use yeah. internal resources and zero expenditure extra. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Berry, I'll go to you for the back here, Councillor Robinson. More of a comment than anything, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. With the Mount Lindsay Road, the reason we were successful in getting funding there was private enterprise equipment, so to speak. And with private enterprise, I wasn't going to support this at all, but seeing we got private enterprise involved and the going to keep the can, I don't see why we should to thank the council for your comments, but, but I've shared that with you and it's only recent through previous talkers this week, and it is only verbal, which is the start of conversation. But as a council, and, 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 and as the council mayor, I will not deal with the saying that we don't do anything about it. Of course we are. But the community needs to be aware that how council needs to operate, and this needs to be funded. It's got to be funded from somewhere. And as we speak, it's not in any budget of ours. 
So, and then even to prioritise it into the future as a council, that's something we'll deal with later on. You know, because we've got a lot of other big picture stuff going on that we're heavily involved in. Um, uh, but the head strip, sadly, has never been, you know, on, on any list of backing work. But we are dealing with it, and, and I look forward to the report coming back from the engineering department. Councillor Bronwyn, thank you. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, you know, I've always been very Councillors, uh, any more uh, questions, comment to do with the report? The recommendations there, councillors, all in favour? Against? Carry. Okay, thank you. Councillors, we move on to page 80, to a second uh, notice of motion. Uh, it's item NM1017, to notice of motion, streetscape improvement, installation of lead lighting in Brown Street. Councillors, saw you being the water with this, you happy to move that notice of motion? I can I have a second, please? Councillor Tom Peters, thank you. Councillor Sawyer, bring your notice of motion, I'll, I'll go to you to present. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of, of this motion is to simply uh, get some internal investigation of the costs involved, and uh, the purpose being that the streetscape is pretty dull after hours. It's like the place is closed down. Sure. Um, and just to clarify, it's not to replace the existing street lights with LED street lights. It's simply to utilise existing trees along either one block or three blocks of the main street in Rouse Street and in Broxton Park, so that we can make a more inviting streetscape over those three blocks. We've got an existing budget um, in both the Christmas and the streetscape Funding, so I'm not looking for anything extra. All I'm asking for is the council's officers to go away, do some homework on what the actual cost, solar power and light, so there's no additional energy costs to improve the streetscape and utilise the street more for more appealing for our visitors. There's no expenditure involved, but uh, the mayor and I were both in Canberra for that conference, and that mall during the day down there is totally uninviting and windswept after hours. It came to light with the orange, orange. And, and the lights aren't intended to flash on and off. They're permanently on with the power that's retained. Now they'll be up the trees, woven through the trees. Yeah. It's similar. Uh, and also, uh, I had uh, two nights in the world uh, a couple of weeks ago, and their Esplanade is similarly lit up at night, and it just makes a more inviting streetscape. A nil cost to us. Only what's already budgeted, which we plan on spending, and if there's a better place to spend it. Yeah. Councillor, thank you. Councillor, there is a no nice motion. I'll go to the second. Obviously, Councillor, your support. Do you want to speak to the nice motion? Uh, just very quickly. Um, when uh, Mel Graham's name was the general manager here, yeah. the um, folk that owns Graham the farm himself, these lights, the they're on a big pole. And I took all the information and thought, I don't know what he ever did with it, nothing ever happened with it. Councillors, um, two speakers for me, speakers against. Those speakers against, I will take one more, then we'll, we'll put the those motion. Councillor Bill. Having seen some of these things in other places and having seen or worried that with the jumpers and scales, anything in general will be improved. <laughs> okay, councillors, the nice motions there in that. In front of you, and it, it is clear that uh, that the authorised chief of running office to investigate the cost, so we're waiting for a report back. And that's a that's a good place to be, and it's respectful for, between us and our our staff that uh, that we work with them like that, and, and, and we'll get a uh, report back from them. This is going to cost us. I can only see good things with this. All in favour? Against? Right. Councillors, we move on to page 82 in your hard copy. It's NM item NM 11 slash 17. To notice the motion, one of an FI grow scheme and Maryland dam water diversion. Councillor Berry, being the author, would give up to move this. Can I have a second, please? Councillor Tom Peters, I thank you. 
Once again, Councillor Berry, being the author, I hand over to you to present this first motion. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Some of this coming out from the cross board meeting in Volangara and also the fact that uh, our Prime Minister wanted to convert some of the snow into pump hole growth scheme. You know, I don't think there could be more suitable site in Australia and some, some of the sites for the temporary storage might go than any of the others, but especially the Bunnamadu and the Pocacrara, uh, the, uh, you've got a terrific head there, you haven't got that much pipeline involved. I've got, I want to have an engineer or actually two engineers are going to come today. One is tired of doing something else and the other one couldn't get away. So engineering. Yeah. Oh, right. oh, no. They're both one's retired, one's uh, busy doing something else. Actually one of the engineers involved that I want to get here, he was going to put a scheme on the Book of Prara, him and a couple of other uh, entrepreneurs. But the problem there was connecting to the grid. They would have had to uh, spend a lot of money getting power to where they were going to put the turbines. And unfortunately, that fell on the heap, otherwise, we'd have a small scale overhead scheme already operating. The other speaker was going to speak on the, on the fact that you can't get base load from wind or solar. You've got to have either hydro, nuclear, or coal. And, uh, Nobody wants to go down the nuclear part and coal fired power stations seem to be on the air as well. So uh, he was going to speak on that and how, how they do in Scotland is virtually every little creek for the high rest in one. We've already got a little bit of power. I've never seen the system so I can't comment too much on it. All the things I've got there from work on the Rank and Hill Engineering Report, the diversion to the Maryland is one of the few economic diversions there. It's only a short distance that have to tunnel. And uh, there's a fair deal there. I think it's over 6,000 megawatts of memory. It fails in comparison to some of the Timbara ones. But uh, also, GHD were given money to study the Indian Creek in Stanford. Now, apparently, the money in the swamp there. The, uh, the, uh, that money has been spent to complete the st study, and they've still got, I think it's two or three million dollars left over. And the member for Baron Howard, our little prayer, said he couldn't see why that money couldn't be transferred to study the at least book of the memory. So that's why I decided I'd better, better put this motion up now before it's too late. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Peter, there's been a second of a motion. Did you want to speak? Not really, no, I just. I totally agree with Councillor Mary. I think it would be a great project. It is impossible not to see the same matter of Thank you, Councillor. Any speakers against, Councillors? Yeah, of course you can, Councillor. Thanks. Um, to, to Gary, how many affected landowners are there? I did hear that uh, a person from proposed areas, particularly down the map, um, was very supportive of it. Um, and um, because I think if it, if it goes to marketing, you can reduce the affected landowners so are supportive of it and have to carry a lot more weight. But thank you, Councillor. Sorry, you're wrong. Thanks, Councillor Bates. You've got the button on this side. Uh, just using the old Tenderfield site where they had put their blocks of cement to do this in the 1920s, there is at least three affected landowners. It depends on the size of the dam, of course. Uh, it could be more, I and mean, then you could make a fairly large stand there. And on the Book of Crara, I'm not too sure where the Rankin Hill study site was. I know where the uh, one that uh, another surveyor looked at was Ralph Fletcher, and there was about three or four landholders that were there. This one was further downstream, mainly in the state forest, so there may not be any. So I can't really answer that one. You couldn't. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I will put this to uh, to vote, Councillor, before I do, just on comment. I thank you, Councillor, for bringing, bringing this forward. It, it, it does hold the Council in, 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 a, in a, a good place because we are supportive. I mean, if this, obviously, there's no speakers against so You know this motion is going to be supported, but to do with our uh, Deputy Prime Minister, we'll be in town tomorrow and Friday um, as our uh, Minister for Dams and, and, uh, and the uh, agriculture sector. It supports everything that, that we should be doing as a council. 
how far it goes and, and we're asking for, uh, the, you know, for the uh, feasibility study to be funded. You know, we know that the Long River Dam and, and that's been supported with the feasibility study and budget and all. Um, it's positive stuff that we're trying to see done, but on a bigger picture. And I uh, already had contact from um, from this rat basin group with Shane Charles as the chair, what information to do with the uh, with our River Dam and, the, and how that's going, and also our support at the, um, at the National General Assembly of the of the um, of that work down further in the town. So the interest is all around what we're doing here because it, it helps and affects them across the board and they don't and they don't expect to have relationships. So it doesn't uh, to, to no the neighbouring council that we would be thinking about at least pursuing uh, you know some work to see if there's any 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 viability in going forward with this sort of stuff. So I do commend you council for bringing it forward and actually our cross border which you did speak about that day it's in a place where it should be. Um, so I, I wish you well with it. And, uh, and we'll be talking to any progress to that. And I'll give you five minutes, of course, you could uh, to close the debate, Council. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Just to wrap up, step between once the new dam was built, you could also be an alternative water supply for Timberfield. I think between four more Ks, I think, two Timberfield, basically, it's all there. <laughs> and the other thing is, I mentioned the catchments can be increased to manage the stream flow. If all the tall woody trees are taken out of just 10% of the catchment river riparian zone. Stream flows increase by up to 40%. So that country up there certainly lends itself to what I know what the stream flows used to be like quite a few years ago. Thank you, Councillor. Those motions there, Councillors. All in favour of those motion? Against? Carried. Thank you. Councillors, we move on to page 84. It's item N in 12, certainly. It's another notice motion by, uh, from Councillor Berry. Formation of a joint committee to do with council affected from councils affected by drugs in the way. Councillor Berry Green, the author, once again, happy to move that. Yeah. Seconder, please. Councillor Sawyer, I'll take you as a seconder. And I'll hand over you to, uh, to present the notice of motion, Councillor Berry. There's not much to say in terms of this one, it's pretty, pretty self explanatory. The idea is to see if we can get another committee, see if we can get this fraction away and up because I think. Rucks away is going to be imperative if we get that new bird server going or anything else going in well and garage Jennings or Tennessee for that matter. It's been trading from the west. While most of the road in the Tenfield Shire is good, the top end needs doing and anything further the west from Tenfield Shire is atrocious. So it's really in the interest of those councils that are further west to come on board. It's also in the interest of uh, Southern Downs if we want to get on the Jennings Council Councillor Sawyer, we the second on those motion. Did you want to speak? No, thanks, Mr. Mayor. So it's planned for you, Councillor Thank you. <laughs> Is there any speakers against? Councillor, there's no speakers against. Now, before we go back to uh, Councillor Berry for closing, just a comment. Uh, with the Alliance's Councillor and, and uh, to all the Councillors, they are successful. Uh, and I'll be corrected or wrong because uh, with the Brooks and the White, we don't deal with the Memorial and, um, and Governor Windy. Uh, because they're, they're the linking councils that way uh, to support uh, um, your notice of ocean councillor. Uh, no one was happy in the previous councils when the government got less their souls in and the books away back to the council and give $750,000 for the rest of his life. And that's something that, that we've had battle with all the time. Uh, as we speak, the heavy transport on that road, uh, even on the district of the line, is on a daily basis, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. and. Um, it, it, is, uh, it is an important link, and, and uh, I'm happy to drive that forward by, uh, by contacting our neighbouring councils to inform them with your address and all their lines. So, uh, but I think it's a, it's a good day, much. Okay, councillors, uh, uh, Councillor Berry, do you have any closing comment? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I think, uh, while I talk about this a little bit, I think it's a little bit wider than the RACs we've got because it goes across the board, so I think that's. Uh, Probably good thing in a way, we both sides of the water. Yeah. Okay, councillors, those motions there. All in favour? Against? Carried. Thank you. Councillors, in there, hard we move on to page 86. It's uh, item RES 717, so council, council resolution register, August 2017. Got a move in a second, please. Deal with this, Councillor Mike Frankly, thank you. Second, please. Councillor Don Ford, thank you. And I'll hand over to our chief operating officer, I'll go to present. A resolution, Mr. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillors, uh, you will receive this uh, each council meeting, and it's just uh, an update on where we're at. Uh, you notice that there has been some changes made, um, and it was just committed to you as it stands. Thank you, Andre. Questions, Andre, to do with our, our old uh, resolution, Mr. Council? No questions? Sorry, you're right. Uh, it was just in relation to the World Health and Safety um, the competency matrix. How does that go? Councillors, um, I'll ask Chloe. Are you going for a second, Chloe? Not to the level of the question I asked. Oh, she no, so no, no, the training, I, I think, of my understanding was that there was a question raised about whether or not we actually had a training program which we could do. Uh, no, apparently there's been a draft uh, training competency matrix developed and it's been done for the Parks Gardens outdoor staff. Um, um, so the Parks and Gardens and Water staff, and it's, it's looking at what their current roles are, what competencies they have, and any gaps that need. So internally we have, um, with our assessment appraisal process, we currently identify the training needs of individuals, so both regulatory training that people need to, to undertake to fulfil their role, as well as some um, additional training that will, will improve, etc. So that is done for every single employee um, right across the, the, the council, based on their, their individual roles. So yes, that is in existence, but what we do is we actually map those training requirements so that we can have the appropriate targeting to get some Thank you, Councillor, for your question. Thank you, Colin, for your, your uh, reply. Councillor, no more questions to do with the report. All in favour to receive a note. Yes, Councillor. Councillor, that's the end of the hour in our open session. It's all the please make sure we're coming to confidential, please. Councillor Mike, briefly seconded, please. Councillor Sawyer, thank you. B6117 officer's recommendation the council determined the interview panel of sorry see, the council determined all councillors form the interview panel as per item three of the council resolution 113 slash 17 with a quorum of five the second item we dealt with was item emv 15 slash 17 it's a damn war contract the council also of the, the chief operating officer to settle outstanding claims in accordance with the contract dispute Resolution mechanisms including expert determination and commercial negotiation were relevant, subject to any final proposed settlement in court before council before final acceptance. Third item council was item ENV 16 slash 17, Dan Wall Construction Contractor. The council resolved to accept the current safety related Tannerville Dan Wall spec and the upgrade project from going through a further public retender process in view of the existing of extenuating circumstances per section 555.3 I of the Municipal Bottom Government Act 1903 and regard to council obligation to ensure the safety of a scheme infrastructure limited community financial capacity, financial grant funding, timeline constraints, and the, and the four, what's that? How do you pronounce that? Four feet? Which one's that? Four, four feet. Four feet. Forfeiture, risk of unplanned grant funding with no scope for extension. The advised time associated with full tender process and the associated procurement delay involved with a level of stakeholder review involvement. Two, endorse council staff undertaking a short and select regenerate both the post density and buttress options involving at least two firms to help inform council of best available value for money moving forward in regard to the relevance and performance, the record and skill sets of the existing select tender shortlist that arose from the first round as precedent of interest public advertising. Those on the short list who demonstrate value for money in the first process. Three, endorse the extension of the contract with Alpha Omega for the revision of contract project management services to council for Timothy and Dan Wall construction subject to negotiation of favourable terms with the revisor that the favourable terms cannot be expeditiously concluded with Alpha Omega. Council staff are authorised to be procure an alternative professional service provider. And council resolution to do with the uh, item NM 1317. Resolve the council resolution 143 dated 26th of July be rescinded that is lost. And the res resolve that the council approve the mayor of executive office to enter into discussion with the owner of the property outlined in the board with a 
view the purchase or any long term lease of the building and associated land. And two, the council staff be authorised to investigate possible benefits to the community of tenant build. And the council staff provide a report to council of the operation requirements on engaging on the venture. To a to a, a, a amendments, one to do with the council confirms council resolution one one four six eight. 17 slash 17 dated 17 August 2017 expressed a willingness for council to sign the S84A native title notice to determine age is subject to conditions whose consent was to improve clarity around effective public infrastructure into the future. B yeah. notes, sorry, yeah. notes the applicant's email correspondence dated 18th of August 2017, New South Wales Councillor's Office, dated 21st of August 2017, Federal Court. Transcripts dated 18th August 2017, recording the knowledge of the way parties to the Western Budget on People Notice of Determination, interpret schedules 1 and 2 in relation to Council Public Infrastructure and Crown Roads, summarised as follows. Now we'll go to the, to, to the paragraph A of Schedule 2 of the concept determined as priority over Pacific Schedule 1 listing that has the effect of extinguishing that title over any land or water listed in Schedule 1. That is subject to a public work necessary for an incidental to a public work. Examples being the Great Community Hall, the Great Arcus, Shed and Training Area, Paris B and C, the Schedule 2 of the Consent Determination have priority over Pacific Schedule 1 listing and have effect of extinguishing native title over Crown Lands. C, the recipient of Resolution 14617. D, delegates authority to the Acting Chief Executive Officer to execute forthwith on its behalf the Section 87 Agreement. And proposed consent determination. The last one, councillors, is to do with the um, with the cut wash officer's recommendation. It was endorsed by council. The council one approved that the acting chief accept the offer to sign the acceptance of funding for road maritime services as detailed in the report. Two approved the acting chief executive to take out a loan of up to 600k for T Corp, depending on fit for the future outcome for the cut wash project. Based on the recommendation of an engineering consultant, three approved the acting chief executive to take out a loan for up to 600 for the National Australia Bank at the best competitive rate should funding not be available for T Corp for the truck wash project. Based on the recommendation of an engineering consultant, four approved the acting chief executive to include the procurement and installation of the double height ring from within council's loan funding. In item two above, approved the acting chief executive to engage an engineering consultant. To rescope the project so to provide the necessary documents as detailed in the report to accompany the Department of Infrastructure New South Wales, restart New South Wales program funding deed, and to also provide project benefit. Six, approve the signing of New South Wales restart New South Wales program funding deed by the Mayor and Acting Chief Executive of the Seal of the Council. Correct me if wrong, Council, that is the end of our confidential. I will close our meeting. I've read out all our outcomes. And the meeting is ended in peace and harmony. Thank you all very much. It's been a good day.